NewbieHack.com. We provide a great deal of information on our products and spend a lot of time doing this so you don't have to. I was doing some testing and something really bothered me. I couldn't get these to work. The, the TX on, RX off, which is controlled or which is running these statements here. And it was because I wasn't, I didn't do my direction, data direction pin for uh, pin D4. I need to do this also to pin D6. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse this to see if I'm actually, well, no, let me, let me, uh, let me not do that. Let me keep this on and then I'm going to turn on the TX, turn off the RX, do a transmit, turn off the TX, turn on the RX. And that's doing is turning on the RX right after this. But I know I'm going to have a problem and we're going to find out by looking at the analyzer. What we're going to do is we're going to put a a lead on or the channel 2 on this PD4 and we're going to put the other channel on the TX line so we can look at two channels at one time on the analyzer. This should tell us exactly what's going on when this is the TX is turning on or when it's when it's in a high state we should be able to do a transmit and then when it's in a low state it will not be able to do a transmit. Now in the analyzer, I'm not going to need 250 million samples, I'll go with 100 million. And I'm going to press start and I'm going to see what we get. Alright, let's, let's take a look at what we got. Okay, it looks like we did not get a good communication because this is turning off before the communication is ending. This is why the, the uh, analyzer is so important because you can see what's actually going on on these lines. So it turns on which is, this is about one instruction. Let's take a look at the code just to see what's going on. Okay, so we're turning the, we're waiting for 15 milliseconds. We're turning it on, turning the TX on, then we're doing a transmit. This is just one instruction after another, but there are two instructions here, so it's actually doing two things. So that's one of the reasons why you see a space here. And then it turns it off. It turns the TX off, but this is still running in the background. So what we need to do is we need to figure out when this is going to stop. Let's, I'm going to try two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to extend this past this point, but I don't want to rely on just a time delay. I would like to rely, I would like to rather turn this off or bring this low when we know this is, has ended. So let's put the time delay in first and see what happens. Uh, we'll do one millisecond or we can actually do maybe 50 microseconds. Let's see what that does. Take the sample, the new sample. We can stop it at any time. We don't really need to get all of the sample. Well, it looks like 50 microseconds is not long enough. You can see that actually, no, it should have been. Did I put that in the right place? Yeah. Well, let's try milliseconds and see what happens. Oh, I didn't put a, I didn't put a semicolon, so maybe that's why it didn't work. Go back to microseconds. Okay, let's do a sampling again. Okay, now we can see that at the 50 microsecond mark, it went back down. So we have where it starts. This is happening in the background. You can see that it did capture correct the correct digit or the, the correct communication. So we could actually take this to 10 microseconds and it'll still work. Go ahead and try that. Okay, let's do another sampling. Now we can see that we're right around the, the frame of the communication, the data frame, and we have still a little bit of um, like a one microsecond leeway here. We also have one before it and it works, but still this is, I may want to to do a few few more. Let, let me see if I can, let me try this. If I do more than one transmit, let's see if it does the same thing, B and then C, build. And what I'm, what I'm expecting to happen is this is all going to happen in the background and this will, this will be short. It won't happen after this. It'll happen right after this is happening. As I, as I, I suspected, it was the 50 millisecond, microseconds right after it first turned on and then it turned off 50, uh, 50 um, microseconds afterwards. So what we need to do is we need to pull the the transmit flag to see to make sure that the it, the transmit was complete so we're going to have to go to the data sheet to find out how to do that in the data sheet under transmitter flags and interrupts in this paragraph the transmit complete txc n flag is is set one when the entire frame in the transmit shift register has been shifted out and there are no new data currently present in the transmit buffer we can check this flag and bring the transmit off and receive on when this flag is set. 
Alternatively, we can also do this as an interrupt. So we can create an interrupt service routine that it will go to when this flag bit is set. And I would rather do that because I'm using interrupts anyway, and I can turn on the, 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 the receiving and turn off the transmit in that interrupt. And we can keep the keep other um, normal instructions that we would need to use out of the, the, the loop. So let's see what we need to do to actually create this ISR, the interrupt service routine, and where this flag is located. Also, it should be noted um, right here, this is really interesting for us because the TXCN flag is useful in half duplex communication, which is what we're doing, where a transmitting application must enter receive mode and free the communication bus immediately after completing the transmission. So it essentially, this is used in our application anyway. So we're going to take advantage of this flag and get it into the receiving mode as quickly as possible. We also need to set the TXCIE zero or one bit in the USCSR01B um, register. This is a control register for the USART. So we can actually use this TXCN flag. So let's take a look at the program. We can uh, we can actually add this to our library as a as a parameter for us to set the interrupt. Let's go back to the program. Take a look at the methods, the UART methods that we have. And I have the USART interrupt enable. Let's add the the transmit interrupt enable flag here. T X C I E zero. So when this is true, which we have it as true, it'll also enable the transmit complete flag. Let's go back to the digital servo communications.c file. We're gonna have to use the transmit vector. Just copy this and just change the TX here. There we go. Now we have to turn off the TX and turn on the RX. We'll do that within this method. And now we don't have to wait. And we can turn the TX on before we transmit here. And let's see what we get in the analyzer. Ah, very good. So it looks like we don't we don't have we're not using any time delays. We have the B and the C here, and the transmit complete caused the the PD4 line to go low. Now we're going to make sure that the receive line, the control for the receive line, is working correctly. We are going to put the channel two onto the breadboard where the pin number four is located for the control for the second line driver or the line buffer. We'll plug it into the control line for the RX and that is plugged into pin number four. Now let's go ahead and do a sampling, see if we got this right. Okay, this is our data. Let's see if we've got our data right. Yep, we got the B and then we've got the C in there. We have the transmit coming. You can see that the on the TX, the, the PD4 or the or the first pin of the, the line driver is being brought up for the transmission to happen. So it gives the transmission control and then it's brought back down. So now it turns that part of the chip off, turns the first line driver off. Now in the receiving, we're turning the receiving on. The receiving on, you can see that that's, it's idle is on. So we're generally in the receiving mode most of the time. You can see that the receiving is on most of the time and the transmitting is off most of the time. Only when the transmitting is on is when we have the, the line brought up to enable the transmitting on that particular single line. Now the receiving, it has it on and then once the transmitting starts, the receiving turns off so we don't want to hear anything while the transmitting turns on and, and it's transmitting something and as the transmit turns off or the transmit is transmit is complete the flag is is complete is set the receive turns right back on so now anything that we put in this location here the transmitting area we know we can do that safely when we're communicating with the digital servo we will not need the delay We'll be just working in a state machine type of environment and uh, we'll be using probably a switch, a case and a switch um, method you've learned um, a lot earlier in my videos. And we'll parse the receiving. We will transmit something to the, the digital servo to see what the reaction is with the digital servo. And we will consider the reception of whatever we get from the digital servo to control other servos. This marks the end of part three for the digital servos. Thank you for watching. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.